As always, thank you for watching The Extraordinary Times. I'm Jeremy. And I'm AJ. <sighs> <sighs> yes, you are. And we're back. <sighs> so, first story of today... We have the Electronic Frontier Foundation. We talked about cracking the story on the FAA issuing licenses for unmanned drones. Well, there is a very comprehensive list down in the link below at EFF.org. Uh, check it out. It's really interesting how many people and where and, and what kinds of people have been flying unmanned aerial drones in U.S. airspace. How long this has been going on, too, because they have the list of... There's a couple that are, have been denied licenses they're on the list a lot of people that you know have a license and there's people whose licenses have run out and they haven't renewed which are actually let's say a good quarter of the the numbers on here so yeah it's it's been around for a while it's also interesting how many of those are universities universities why how awesome no cool. maybe or maybe not awesome okay so going back and once again to uh Yesterday, yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. Um, the asteroid mining company that you know, uh, director James Cameron and Google executives and all that are putting together have put forward the details of their company um, and what they're going to be mining and, and how and all that. Um, details of which kind of surprised me. I thought they were going to be going after iron and uh, that kind of stuff. You know, the things that most uh, asteroids are, are composed, uh, comprised of. Let's see if I can talk. Um, actually, they're going to be mostly going after uh, platinum and its uh, related materials, um, as well as water, so you know they can turn it into rocket fuel. Interstellar, well, in, in, intrastellar <laughs> uh, gas stations. <laughs> that means in this solar system. Sorry, getting technical speak again. Uh, anyway, science <laughs> done. <laughs> this is cool. They, you know, it they, is. They are fully planning this out, like putting uh, uh, the stations where they think the rockets would be going. The, the important thing that he didn't just say was, well, he, he said stations. What he means is actually taking the asteroids and, you know, how, how asteroids sometimes are moving, especially when they come by Earth. Well, you know, they're going to grab them and take them places and turn them into space stations. Because they're awesome. made of iron. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. Oh, uh, football. So, football. Apparently, you know, when uh, when you have a uh, award-winning team such as the Saints, uh, all of a sudden people start paying attention to everything you do and everything you've ever done. Uh, such as the Saints GM having a bug in the guest coach's suite in the Superdome. I don't mean, I don't mean oh, a bug. No. I mean a bug. Yeah, so uh, apparently in, in the years of 2002, 3, and 4, uh, at least, there was a bug in there where uh, you could listen in. Oh, oh, really, man? Come on. You're going to do this and throw in a question every single victory you had after this or during this? Ever had uh, ever? I'm just saying, man. Listen. Come on. Don't, no, don't cheat. Be good at what you do. Don't cheat. All right. So, oh, this one I don't understand at all. The, the mindset just completely escapes me. Well, you're not a sociopath. True. I hope. <laughs> anyway. Last so. I checked. <laughs> and we move on. Right. <laughs> so, over in Utah, a uh, couple of, I'm, I'm going to call them kids because. Because they're kids uh, in here. Or just crazy. Probably both. 19 and 21 year old. Guys, we're going to call them that. Anyway, guys, um, set up a couple of booby traps on a, a popular hiking trail in Provo Canyon. Um, and I don't mean like, you know, water balloon traps. I mean spiky boulders of death. Spiky boulders and a pit with sharpened wooden sticks in it. Ah. Fortunately, they were first found by, uh, let's see, Officer James Schoeffler of the U.S. Forest Service, uh, who is also a... Um, ex-military. Um, so, when he sees a tripwire, he's like, oh, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are saying, well, we were just doing it for to trap animals, and he's like, you built a house 
looked like it was occupied by humans and could have like little kids running up to like cool a shelter. And no punji sticks. <sighs> so fortunately, they've been uh, apprehended, I believe. Um, yeah, he took pictures and uh, took down the booby traps as soon as possible, and you know, turned everything into the authorities. So, fortunately, that is taken care of. But oh, but geez. what were they slapped with again? Oh, it was misdemeanor attempt to harm something like that. Uh, yeah. uh, misdemeanor Re reckless, reckless endangerment. endangerment. Yeah, unfortunately, the highest misdemeanor, they which is itty bitty slap on the wrist, probationary kind of stuff. Not uh, you hurt or killed somebody it would be felony levels. <laughs> felony level manslaughter <laughs> awfulness. So hopefully these guys don't ever do that again. Hopefully they get the help they need. Yeah, because that's that's bad, yeah. real bad. But anyways, we move on to probably the most honest thing I've ever read from MSNBC and the New York Times. Because, uh, you know, they, they team up sometimes because uh, they love things on the left. And I had to go to my right for your left. <laughs> things I do for you. <laughs> so they, they, they teamed up and wrote this, wrote this little story about how uh, the Obama administration is trying to shift power and, 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 I mean, congressional power, you know, away so that the Obama administration can do it at once. And for those of you who don't know... That's a have, bad thing. That's a bad thing. <laughs> we have a constitution for a reason. The constitution allows for the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the Congress to all work together to accomplish things and to work against each other when things shouldn't work or can't work or won't or whatever. They are made so that things don't go too fast so nobody has too much power. And he's going way too okay. fast. And he's trying to go way too fast. He's, he's you know, having these White House strategy meetings where there should be having these, you know, real helpful conversations about, you know, what we're going to do today or, you know, for the next week. And instead of that... They are, you know, trying to figure out how to subvert Congress and subvert the judiciary. So, in case you don't know how bad this guy is, and I didn't in the beginning, like I've said before, and I'll say it again, I well, voted he, for him. He I'm campaigned sorry. against this kind of stuff. He did. He campaigned against, you know, Bush, and Bush is circumventing Congress, and he's... You know, doing this and that and the other, and I would never do that, and blah, blah, blah. No, you and are doing it right now. It's on paper and film and all kinds of things. Oh. Just keep shoving that foot deeper in, and we'll keep pointing it out. Anyways. All right. So, thinking, uh, speaking of things uh, that we're going to point out, uh, TSA, again. Again, I try and defend the good people of the TSA because there are good people. In the TSA. And then there's the ones that do this. Okay, so a little four-year-old girl goes through security. It's fine with going through security. Then her grandmother goes through security and sets up the metal detector. The little girl's like, hey, grandma, you, you went through. And she runs up and gives her grandma a hug. And grandma picks her up, you know, like grandma does. And the TSA says the four-year-old has a gun now. Yeah. They forced a pat down. They were yelling. They were threatening to shut down the entire airport. What the? Huh? We're going to have to shut down this whole airport because your four-year-old got past a gun by her grandma. You couldn't just make her go through the, the, the metal detector again see if anything changed? Or, you know, shoot her with your, your magic see-through-everything beam? <sighs> Come on, man. Just, just common sense. Uh, I mean, we talked about it before. We'll talk about it again. Uh, uh, Israel. Israel has one of the safest flying situations ever in their in their airlines because well they profile they profile profile profile, profile. <sighs> and you want to say profiling is bad profiling is is you know racist, you shouldn't, racist yeah but you know what as many threats as israel faces down every single hour of every single day the airline has never ever ever since the 70s since it was established been attacked Ever. They've never had a plane hijacking. They've never had people crash their planes into anything. You know why? Because they kick the people off before they even get to the airport, basically. 
And when has the TSA ever caught anybody? And when, yeah, the the only thing the TSA has ever done is respond after a threat, re retaliate, if you will, against the American people, against threats that have already come to pass. Yep. Just because one guy came came with a bomb in his underwear, now we have to, you know, shoot through your clothes and see if you got a bomb in your jibblies. Come on, man. Anyway, so, wanted to end on a good note, so we're going to end on a good note. Uh, an American by the name of Doug P Dean. Dean. Dean Potter. <laughs> Doug. <laughs> Anyways, Dean Potter uh, went over to China to the... Enchi Grand Canyon. Enchi Grand Canyon, because our Grand Canyon is not cool enough, apparently. <laughs> uh, he took he took a, a rope with him and stretched it across this canyon, and uh, 30 feet across. Yeah, 130 feet or so, and uh, went for a leisurely walk on this rope that was leisurely tied. wasn't exactly yeah. a tight rope. It was mm, it was kind of kind of droopy. So yeah. That's a thing now, apparently. Not Jeez. tight rope walking. Awesome. 6,000 feet down. Jeez, I, I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to freak at night. He's, he's, he's having vertigo just thinking about it. Oh. For me, I mean, this guy went with headphones and, and you know, clothes on and just went for a walk. Like, that blows my mind. Not even a pole. Not just even a pole. Well, because apparently it, you don't need that same kind of, like, pole kind of... Balance when you're walking across a slack rope as you do a tightrope, which is Jeez. weird to me. Anyways, go check out uh, check out what he did. We'll link down to the the video down there. It's in Chinese, so in case you don't understand Chinese like us, just crank down or just watch it anyways or whatever. Thanks for watching. Keep watching while I'm gone. That's AJ. That's Jeremy. And these are extraordinary times. I'll see you when I get back from Vegas, and be aware. Oh, I'm so glad it works now. It's working. It's working.